presence of Antarctica on ancient maps because we didn't discover it until 1820. Antarctica is a large, mostly frozen continent with strong winds, frequent snowfall, occasional thawing, expanding water upon freezing, and the ability of ice-covered water to fracture, creating unusual patterns. What Antarctica reminds us of are its enormous snow-covered terrain and freezing-to-death atmosphere. However, does anyone think something may be hiding behind this huge mound of snow? Is this discovery proof that aliens have landed on Earth? And why is the world power trying to hide it from the entire planet? Join us as we explore the terrifying truths of the U.S. At its inception, Earth served as a catch-all for meteorites that fell to Earth. Moreover, these collisions provide proof of extraterrestrial life. Despite this, astrobiology scientists continue to pursue different topics and conduct different studies in response to these impacts. There have been 50,000 meteorites that have crashed into Antarctica so far. Footprints in the snow and the slow but steady melting of glaciers over time provided all the proof needed. But Allen Hill's 84001 in 1984 is the rock that has been found to date that is most important. By following that rock path, scientists were able to return to Mars. The fossilization of prehistoric life was found in the snow rock, which was a surprising discovery. Antarctica is possibly a land of extremes. Even Japan's Mount Fuji cannot break this three miles thick snow surface. During its peak season, only 4,000 scientists and military personnel can inhabit this suspicious land. Antarctica is the last frontier. It holds our imagination. Here be monsters, proclaimed ancient maps. Antarctica is the last uninhabited continent that might have been so designated. The discovery of this frozen continent 250 years ago left scientists with more questions than answers. But the icy thickness conceals its surface, thus many questions remain unsolved. The ancient astronaut theory put forth the idea that it is not just the geology that is hidden from us. According to experts, Antarctica is a hub of human and maybe non-human activity. An ancient astronaut theorist proposed that it is not just the geology that is hidden from us. Experts suggest that Antarctica is an epicenter of human and perhaps non-human activity. Furthermore, many believe this area may be some sort of extraterrestrial base. If these theories hold, then Antarctica has been home to extraterrestrial colonies for a very long time. Despite its snowy appearance on Earth maps, Antarctica has the potential to host colonists from other planets. An unnamed military person's testimony as an eyewitness to a suspicious incident also contributed to the theory's validity. In July of 2018, Linda Moulton Howe conducted an interview with that individual, with one condition though. That individual would not have consented to submit the data unless his identity could be concealed. That person claimed to have visited along with his team, an octagonal structure protruding from the ice. The top structure rose 18 feet from the ice, while the rest was hidden. All the entrance doors were the same. Although the doors looked thick and heavy, a slight push opened the door during the first attempt. At that moment, the outside temperature was minus 40 degrees. However, when they entered inside, the temperature rose to 70 degrees. One thing that took that military person and his team by surprise was that the entire place was lit in a lime green color without any source. Further, the wall was lined with hieroglyphics. Antarctica offers fewer opportunities for excavation due to its physiological isolation from the globe. Surrounded by nearly pure ice, being alive for any length of time becomes an impossibility. Additionally, on typical days, the temperature drops to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Numerous challenges are placed on scientists and specialists by this physical component. Maybe someone is living in our remote past? Perhaps this alien race has constructed enormous secret structures that we are unaware of. It has the potential to be the biggest revelation in human history, according to scientists. More so, online UFO enthusiasts have spotted what they claim is a crashed UFO in Antarctica. The six-mile-wide island of Two Hummock is home to two mountains, Bosch Peak and Motive Peak. 
and an eerie item that people on the internet are calling an alien spacecraft. It is near Modev Peak, where the strange item was spotted. Whether or not it is a UFO is unknown, but it does resemble an alien vessel from a 1960s movie. The object has a domed top and wide rim and appears to be metallic in composition and is positioned on its side. The putative extraterrestrial ship was deemed a run-of-the-mill UFO by numerous social media users who put its width at 12 meters. It's obviously a craft. Look at how smooth the curvature is. If being eroded by a wave, it would not keep a consistent shape like that and certainly not poke out the opposite way and even indent in behind it forming a perfect circle. The ones saying it's ice are completely ignoring these facts. This is a wonderful find, one social media user commented. While on assignment for Raytheon Technologies Corporation in Antarctica, Eric Hecker, speaking at the US UFO disclosure meeting, claimed to have seen powerful machines that might be utilized to contact alien crafts in deep space. Directed energy weapon systems are something that people need to get into their vocabulary fast. There are technologies at the South Pole Station that people can't even begin to imagine that exist on this plant. According to their scientific claims, the Ice Cube Neutrino Detector can do more than just listen. It can actually send out signals. There are digital optical modules embedded in the ice. Having demonstrated its transmitting capabilities, the world's largest direct energy weapon system has been transformed from the world's largest telescope. Billy Carson, a paranormal researcher and UFO believer, said Antarctica is hiding an evil or dangerous secret under its frozen surface. According to him, a NASA photo shows a pyramid in the Ellsworth Mountains, which he believes is a sign of an ancient evil that might be unleashed by scientific exploration. Additionally, he cited the warning of retired astronaut Buzz Aldrin about the threat of an evil entity. Also recently, a NASA scientist has recently made a shocking revelation that is sure to give goosebumps to believers in extraterrestrial life. It is worth noting that NASA has already discovered several mysterious tunnels. Following these discoveries, the American Space Agency has also been accused of hiding information regarding extraterrestrials. In fact, according to media reports, Kevin Knuth, a distinguished academician working at NASA's Ames Research Center, believes that the oceans are inhabited by aliens who are living secretly. These claims are certainly surprising. During a podcast, Theories of Everything, Knuth stated that if aliens are really present on our blue planet, then the seafloor or ocean floor would be ideal for them. They can create a base, live comfortably, and keep an eye on the happenings on Earth. According to podcast host Kevin Knuth's Theory of Everything, the majority of Earth's mass is water. We still don't have a full picture of the underwater environment since extraterrestrials have been there. The aliens may have found the ideal hiding spot here. Extraterrestrials, in Kevin's opinion, are exceptionally bright and they would thrive in oceans if they originate from a watery habitat. Meanwhile, non-native animals pose a threat to the last big wilderness on Earth due to global warming. An extraterrestrial creature rests face up on green non-slip flooring at the base of the stairs to Deck 5. Up close, you can make out the twitching of one of its six legs and the crushed remains of one of its translucent wings. While Australia's newest icebreaker, the RSV Nohona, is carrying a large number of Antarctic expeditions, this ship has not yet cleared customs. The extraterrestrial creature buzzed across the Derwent River, squeezed through an open hatch, and sped into the ship's belly until it died of agitation and tremors a few days after the Nuaina left Hobart, Tasmania. Musca domestica is the scientific name for this animal. Most people recognize it as the common housefly. It probably wouldn't have made it to Antarctica, even if someone hadn't stepped on it. Flies move very slowly and almost don't take flight when the temperature drops below 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Surviving flies buzz at the ship's windows, trying to escape the upper decks. If their prison break were to succeed, they'd find themselves facing seemingly endless waters with nowhere to go. The Southern Ocean provides a formidable barrier to entering Antarctica, a great wall of water and powerful currents 
that have separated the continent from the rest of the world for about 30 million years. Couple that with freezing temperatures, and the Antarctic provides little hope for a wayward housefly trapped on a ship. The temperature of Antarctica, however, is changing, and changing dramatically. East Antarctica was 70 degrees hotter than usual. Although it could be a one-off, scientists are predicting that the average temperature of the continent might increase by a couple of degrees by the year 2050. The continent is warming at a rate that is 10 times faster than the global average in some areas, such as the Western Peninsula. The Esperanza Base Research Station in Argentina hit a record high temperature of 18.3 degrees Fahrenheit in February 2020, creating an environment that a stray housefly may potentially live in. Lost flies have had a tough time getting to the southernmost continent on Earth in the past. Humans started offering transient opportunities for alien intrusion in the 1800s, when Antarctic explorers were trying to find and document the continent. Antarctic research stations, which are permanent outposts for researching the ice and the Antarctic ecology, are resupplied annually by a small number of nations with a permanent presence across the continent. The continent and its environs are now more accessible than ever before via air and water, but membership is still limited. According to Dana Bergstrom, an ecologist at the Australian Antarctic Division, back of the napkin math suggests that less than one million people have ever set foot on Antarctician soil. However, even that is evolving. Tourists were flocking to the Antarctic in droves before the epidemic grounded all ships. The International Association of Antarctic Tour Operators reports that around 75,000 tourists visited the Antarctic in the 2019-20 season. Compared to last season, that's a 35% rise. No matter where people go, bugs will follow. Tourism organizations like the International Association of Antarctic Tour Operators and state Antarctic programs take significant measures to avoid biological invasions and signatories to the Antarctic Treaty and the Madrid Protocol, which preserve the Antarctic environment, are obligated to minimize their impact on the unspoiled wilderness. However, their plans aren't foolproof. Antarctic ecosystems have been hidden from the globe for millennia, and if an extraterrestrial were to get in, it might have terrible consequences. It's a super special place to understand how the planet works, and so it's really worthwhile putting all our efforts into trying to keep nature operating without interfering. A group of storage containers and sheds are located in an oasis devoid of ice on the Antarctic Peninsula's eastern coast. Surrounded by a diverse array of species, including a large concentration of Adelie penguins on neighboring islands, the Davis facility serves as Australia's southernmost outpost on the mainland. In 2014, its hydroponics facility was the site of an infamous alien invasion. In May of that year, expeditioners entered the facility, composed of two gray shipping containers, to pick fresh greens for the chef's evening meal. They trudged across the snow-covered Davis grounds and opened the door, as if stepping through a portal. They were greeted by the sight of leafy vegetables arranged neatly, the sound of trickling water, and most obviously, heat. Nah. During the vegetable collection, they inspected the facility's water and noticed a black mat had developed over the surface. When they looked closer, they realized it wasn't a mat, says Andy Sharman, environmental manager at the Australian Antarctic Division. It was thousands of tiny invertebrates. Davis had been invaded by the thing, a thousand times over. Invading the facility undetected, the Zanila arthropods quickly multiplied in the humid, warm environment. This area of the Antarctic has never before seen the flea-like creatures called Kalembalans, who had previously been entrenched in warmer climates. They might endanger the local environment if released, according to a panel of top scientists. In a flash, the station switched to an elimination mode, the pace was lightning quick. Even the newly gathered veggies that had made it to the Davis kitchen were among the items that were wrapped and burned after the reaction team sprayed alcohol throughout the facility. The structure went through severe freeze-thaw cycles. The heat would cause any remaining eggs to hatch, but then the temperature would plunge to lower, killing the young. 
Extreme social separation measures were also taken by the reaction team. The containers were returned to Australia a few months following the discovery and subsequent eradication efforts. The aliens probably got in through plant feed, according to an inquiry into the incursion source. Even though the Columbolin hasn't been detected in the area since subsequent surveillance, other stations have also experienced invasions, so safeguarding the continent from these threats is an ongoing struggle. Among the accomplishments of the Australian Antarctic Division is the extermination of the things at Davis. Yet, incursions remain an ever-present danger. While invertebrates are notorious for hiding in shoes and bags, plant seeds in Velcro, and marine animals in ballast tanks on ships are among the most frequently disseminated non-native species. Casey Station, located on the Antarctic Peninsula in Australia, has been fighting a mushroom fly infestation in its sewage system for more than 20 years. The critter probably traveled concealed in vegetables, and there have been continuous attempts to get rid of it. Similar to this, in 2017, expeditions from Poland found an alien fly in the sewage of an Antarctic Peninsula station. Despite its lack of flight skills and inability to withstand very cold temperatures, it managed to escape captivity and spread, demonstrating that invaders continue to endanger the fragile ecosystem of the continent. The invertebrates that hide in and around human habitations can be located, studied, and, ideally, removed. So far, Australia's stringent biosecurity controls have proven to be very efficient. Nonetheless, there are countless intruders that can bypass our defenses by employing their unique means of transportation, and we can't even see them. With global warming making Antarctic waters more habitable for extraterrestrial life, protecting the ocean will become an additional front in the struggle against alien invasion. But the Antarctic Circumpolar Current is the strongest current on Earth. Thus, any extraterrestrial invasion by sea would be a major challenge. The ACC acts as a natural barrier by going clockwise around the continent, preventing any marine life from reaching the Southern Hemisphere. On the other hand, humans managed to overcome the current over a hundred years ago. The dangerous seas are navigable by icebreakers and tourist ships, which means non-native species can hitchhike from ports all over the world. According to Arlie McCarthy, a PhD student at the University of Cambridge who studies Antarctic marine creatures, ships that visit Antarctica visit every other part of the world, so potential pathways stretch everywhere. The delicate ecosystems of Antarctica are coming under more and more pressure from these increasingly used routes. In 2020, scientists found mussels that had made the Antarctic Peninsula their home. The mussels had originally come from Patagonia. The species had probably been carried in on a ship's hull and had made its way to Fildes Bay on the West Antarctic Peninsula. Nevertheless, it is difficult to determine the type of ship. Tourists have been filling more than half of the ships that visit the peninsula in the past few years. A further one-third come for the purpose of scientific study. Not only that, but these two pursuits are on the rise. Still, researchers are attempting to pin down which species are most likely to launch an invasion. Using a machine learning algorithm, a team of Australian scientists has identified four marine species that pose a threat to the Antarctic marine ecosystem currently, and five more that could do so in the future due to climate change. The invasion of one species, the Northern Pacific Sea Star, has proven to be very troublesome. It is quite probable that a shipping vessel brought the starfish to Tasmanian waters from the Northern Hemisphere. The precise consequences of rising sea temperatures are unknown to scientists. On the other hand, machine learning studies have shown promising outcomes. Because the Antarctic continent is both too distant and too frigid, the likelihood of non-native organisms colonizing its waters is very low, up to the year 2100. In order to keep aliens at bay, it is crucial to always keep an eye out for potential newcomers. Is eradication going to be necessary if aliens do arrive? Exorbitant costs, immense difficulty, and more disruption to the surrounding ecology are all possible outcomes of such an undertaking. The ideal way to prevent an invasion seems to be to stop it before it starts, but is it really possible? 
We've been lucky so far. It, however, will not always remain so. Thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.